Hello children, today we are going to read a very interesting 1x play and the name of the play is The Never Never Nest and that is written by Cedric Mount. So let me tell you something about the author. Cedric Mount, George Cedric Wright, who was born on April 13, 1889, was raised in Alameda, California. By his occupation, he was an American violinist writer and a wilderness photographer. During his brief literary career that was from 1932 to 1940, he produces some very thought-provoking plays which include Dyer's and Dole, To Cut a Long Story, Nature's Abhors a Vacuum, A Twentieth Century Lullaby, Mount's One Act Plays Are Satirical, Witty and Insightful. These One Act Plays expose the shams of the contemporary society. Besides, delicately admonishing the guilty. He was a long-time participant in the annual Wilderness High Trips sponsored by the Serra Club and he died in 1959. So today we are going to read the one act play. First of all let me tell you what one act play is. It is a play that has that is distinct from plays that occur over several acts. The one act play may consist of one or more scenes. It is brief, it is confined to a single dramatic situation and it produces a single effect. The number of principal characters is restricted to two or three. The characters are ordinary men and women whom we come across in our lives. So here in Never Never Nest, it is a comic one-act play about a young couple depicting a naive couple Jack and Jill who bought each and every luxury of their life on installments and are living cheerfully without being aware that they would be struggling under the burden of their near future. And they because they make full use of the buy now pay later marketing system. This comedy is very relevant today because today also people we see people buy almost everything now on the installment basis. So let me introduce you to the characters of the play. We have three characters. First is Jack, an easygoing person. He thinks it is buy wise to buy even an expensive villa by paying for it in installments. Jill, who is his wife and avid supporter of her husband's wills. And Aunt Jane, who is either Jack's or Jill's aunt, she is glad to see that Jack and Jill have all the luxuries but is awestruck when she heard that the couple was going into trouble soon. So let me give you the brief summary of this lesson. Jack and Jill believe in buying furniture to house in easy installments. They have recently purchased a house, car and furniture in installment. Jack has a job, yet is a little hard to pay the installment in time. Sometimes Jack borrows from money lenders to pay the installments. The money lenders he pays back in installments. Aunt Jane is the relative of Jack and Jill and she makes a visit to their new house. She is paying a visit to Jack and Jill's new house for the reason so that she can give them a surprise. Jack and Jill show her around the house car and furniture etc. Ja Aunt Jane finds it hard to believe that Jack was rich enough to purchase a house, a car and a furniture. At this point both Jack and Jill inform her that they have bought their house and car and furniture in easy installments. Aunt Jane is not convinced how could they pay their installments. Aunt Jane was glad that Jack and Jill have purchased house and things but she didn't like the idea of borrowing money to pay their installments. Aunt Jane was not happy at all. She believes that one should spend less than what he has earned. So feeling pity for Jack worried how he would pay his next installments, Aunt Jane leaves them a check of £10 and goes home. Jack accompanies Aunt Jane to the bus. In the meanwhile, Jill sends the nurse to the post office to post a check to the doctor. Because when Jack returns, Jill tells him that when she has sent the £10 to actually Mr. Dr. Martin, from whom they have bought their baby even on installments. So this title points to the trends of a young middle class couple who is interested in buying so many household items and house on easy installments. In the case of Jack and Jill, the matter is extremely serious. They have run greater risk in owing the villa that was beyond their excess. With six pounds earned every week, Jack's weekly installment were higher than his income. The playwright feels that such couples would make a nest but they will never settle happily. If we talk about another version, Jack and Jill call their house a little nest, like birds make their nest from wires, fibers and grass. 
all collected free of cost. Jack and Jill too have made their nest right from the villa. They lived to the radio. They had them in all easy installments. It will take them years to own their villa, their car, their furniture, etc. So if we talk about the theme of the play, the higher purchase system, it enables the low income group to have the things and which they cannot buy with their money. On the other hand, the systems make people extravagant. They fall into the habit of borrowing which makes them unhappy. Same thing happens to this situation. What happens that they are unable to pay the installments. They might have to leave their house which simply shows the insecurity of the luxuries of their life. Let me give you the analysis of the play. First of all, the title of the play, The Never Never Nest, has two never in it. Why? Because it is ensuring that nest would be never built. It is emphasizing, the neg double negative is emphasizing the impossibility of home. The nest in the title literally refers to the home of birds. Birds make their home by collecting so many things from different trees. Their nest acts as their temporary home as they do migration with respect to the changing weather. But unfortunately, this word nest is suggestibility. The word nest is a suggestion of instability temporary home that can be attacked by the money lenders anytime if the installments are not paid on time. So by this we can understand that even if the family have bought each and every luxury of life on installment and they are living cheerfully but unfortunately they cannot and they are aware of it that they will be struggling under the burden of life and these hardships will actually not finish at all. Thank you.